to me. Information, news, and entertainment on demand. WSRadio.com. Accomplishment Coaching is proud to present the following fine programming. Accomplishment Coaching, where coaches lead and leaders coach. AccomplishmentCoaching.com. Welcome to the Wealth Building Hour. And this is RJ Kelly. I'm founder and chief visionary officer of Wealth Legacy Group in San Diego, California. And thanks as always for joining us today. I've got to wrap up this year of 2017. I've got two of the brightest minds that I know that are going to share with us, and also two of the really the coolest people. I hate that word cool, but I got to sound, but. There truly are two of the most remarkable people in terms of their heart set as well as their mindset that I could find in the country. I've got Randy Fox, longtime friend from Chicago, Illinois. Burr, welcome, Randy, and lovely Burry, Chicago. Thanks, RJ. Nice to be here. And and the Which other, I was there. Yeah, I know. I wish you were here too. Uh, but soon enough, you will be. Uh, and also, Bill High out of Heartland, or out of. Uh, Overland Park, Kansas. Bill, likewise, I imagine it's a little bit brisk back there this morning. It's great to be on the show, RJ. Thanks so much, for both of you, for joining us. A number of years ago, I went through an extensive training on philanthropy and how to uh, utilize various philanthropic tools in the conversation with high net worth and ultra high net worth families. And we then broke up into various small groups and Invariably, I had the opportunity to be in one of Randy, Randy Fox's small groups, and I made it a point after the first time I met Randy to always be in Randy's small group because he was the smartest one in the group. And Randy has a practice that is a national practice. Uh, he deals with attorneys and financial advisors that call on him for help. It kind of like who you call Ghostbusters. Well, if Ghostbusters aren't available, then it's Randy Fox uh, on deals of philanthropy. But, uh, Randy, I appreciate the, all you've done, and I'm enjoying the cases that we're getting to work on today as well, both in San Diego and Texas and some other parts of the country. And, Bill, I loved your book. I know you've written something like eight or nine different books, uh, as well as n- numerous articles on philanthropy uh, in your work, both as an attorney and author and CEO of, of National Christian Foundation Heartland, uh, and which I think – didn't I read that, that you guys have, have created over uh, $2 billion so far in contributions just since 2000? Did I get that right? Yep. We should cross the $2.5 billion mark here very shortly. Yeah, My eyes glaze over once it gets much above 1,000. But anyway, that, that's an extraordinary number. And I think, Randy, you are well over $500 million as well, just little old you. Do I have that number right? The closes, I'm hoping it's the number is going to edge up uh, quite a bit. Well, I, I feel like a piker. We crossed our first hundred million in August of 2012. We're well on our way for our second hundred million, and not counting a, a, a very wealthy gentleman that we helped. Um, I felt good about those numbers. Those are just truly staggering numbers, and it just shows both what effective communicators you are, but also the the kind of folks that you're working with and the ability that you've got to communicate. So that's what we're going to pull out from you this morning. And so uh, let's just start right in. So, Randy, why don't we start with you and, and just, you know, who are you? What, what is it you're doing? Who do you do it for? And most importantly, why do you do it? Well, um, RJ, as, as you know, I started doing this a long time ago. I had a traditional financial planning practice in suburban Chicago with a couple of partners. Um, and as you also know, I'm a, I'm a child of the 60s and now a child in my 60s. <laughs> so I... <laughs> I, I, I always wanted to have this, uh, you know, change the world, make it a better place. Uh, I grew up with that attitude. A- and uh, the opportunity came up in 1988 or 1989 to um, uh, attend a training down in Indianapolis with a company called Renaissance where I learned about charitable remainder trusts. And, uh, you know, that was kind of my first step into estate planning and my first step into charitable planning. And I just became entranced with the idea. Well, what I discovered was I had one tool, and I knew there were a bunch more, and I didn't know where to go learn them, so I just started going around uh, everywhere I could to get as much information as I could uh, so that 
I would be well-rounded and serve my clients the best. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of one thing led to another, and here I am today. I do work for uh, financial advisors, attorneys, a couple of CPAs uh, all over the country in in the matters of uh, income tax and estate planning, but specifically very focused on philanthropy. That's really what I'm passionate about, and it's really where I uh, probably have the greatest depth of knowledge. There's a lot of people that know a lot more about uh, regular estate planning than I do, but uh, on the philanthropic side, uh, I, I tend to excel. You really do. And I'm, I'm a chartered advisor in philanthropy. I've got a, a few other credentials behind my name. I don't know anybody who knows their ins and outs of philanthropic tools better than Randy Fox, which just in addition to the fact that you're just a delightful uh, a lot of fun to be with, and you make clients feel right at home. I, I can't think of anybody else I'd want to be in a meeting with. Uh, although I got to say, this Bill High guy uh, is also somebody I'd like in that same meeting. Bill, uh, what is it that that you do? I mean, I understand by the way that you were recently awarded um, one of the top twenty five philanthropic speakers in twenty seventeen, as uh, as ranked by Philanthropy Media. That's quite an honor. Congratulations uh, for that. So unpack it for us. You know, you're, you're, you've got all these different hats, both as attorneys and author and, and the, uh, the book uh, with David Green, giving it all away and, and getting it back again, which is just an extraordinary read. And I encourage every business owner out there who's starting to think about legacy issues to, to snap up several copies of that, not only to read it, but also to give it away. So, Bill, what is it that you do and how do you do it and who do you do it for? Well, just a little bit of background. I think at your core, you always come from a certain place. I was a poor kid who grew up on the other side of the tracks. My problem is that both sides of the tracks look the same. <laughs> so the, the whole concept of working with family was a big deal to me. Ultimately, I got a degree in education and ultimately went to law school, practiced law for about 12 years. But I moved over into this foundation space almost 18 years ago. And in the context of what I do, I get to work a lot with individual families. And some of it's pretty, pretty transactional. We're focused on helping them become effective givers, working at their estate plans. But over time, we've just had families come to us and say, we need help thinking about our family legacy. How do we think beyond one generation and impact multiple generations? So that's led to a whole growth of a practice that really is very family-focused and family-legacy-oriented. So it's been a great journey, a lot of tools that you bring into that process, but a lot of it's soft side issues, helping on communication issues, helping on some of the very practical issues of just helping a family think about how do they celebrate, how do they develop rituals that are meaningful so they carry on from one generation to the next. And. I'll put this question to both of you, uh, and Bill, maybe we'll, just, we'll start with you since uh, you just finished up. So many individuals that I meet think just because they've got their estate planning attorney, hopefully, many of them don't, but just because they think they have an estate planning attorney and maybe a CPA, that that's all they need. And if it's a really, I remember several years ago when I was uh, brought in to hopefully help consult this fellow who was selling his company for $10 million, and he was going to pay $2 million of, of capital gains tax, or what I refer to as most of us refer to as, as involuntary philanthropy. I remember asking him if he would be interested in visiting about some tools or techniques or strategies that, that could eliminate that involuntary philanthropy giving, and in fact, $10 million, uh, and that that money could be used to invest, generate an income, but also do some things for good back in the world. I asked him if he would be interested in having a conversation about that, and his response was, something effective, uh, RJ, I'm not interested. I said, well, I, I'm sure you've got a good reason for saying that. Do you mind my asking what it might be? And, and his response was something like, well, my attorney and my CPA have been lifelong friends. And if, if there was anything I needed to know out there about some other ideas, they would have told me about it. So no, I'm not interested. <laughs> so Bill, where's that mindset come from? And how do, I, I mean, is that all a client really needs is just his attorney and CPA, particularly in issues of philanthropy and legacy and beyond? Well, let me take your example of that, RJ. I actually had a family come to me, and they brought their state documents to me, and they said, hey, we, we're, we're just wanting you to look over them and see if there's anything else we need. 
I looked at the documents and I said, look, you know, you have good legal documents, but you have very poor legacy documents. These are not going to help you carry on your values from one generation to the next. And that, I think, is what I see, frankly, with most estate planning documents. They're pretty good legal documents, so we're not trying to intrude upon all that, but we're trying to help families add things into those estate planning documents that really can help carry out a set of values. So typically, I see those estate planning documents as a beginning point rather than as an end point. I, I love that expression. Good, you may have good legal documents, which I have an in-house attorney, as I think you both know, and we, we tear documents apart quite regularly and find that there's a lot of things lacking in them. But uh, certainly the biggest component is that they have very poor legacy document awareness. Randy, you also have been received a number of awards. Uh, the Fithian Award, you were, um, is, which is for outstanding leadership in philanthropy and in just the financial services world. We got thirty seconds left. How? What's your perspective on why there is this gap where uh, high net worth individuals think all they need is their attorney and their CPA? Well, I think I think people don't know what they don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, they don't know there's alternatives. They don't know that they can do things. You know, if you say the word philanthropy to a business owner, uh, he often thinks of Carnegie and Rockefeller and doesn't mm. see himself the same way. Good point. Uh, if you say, but you, you've supported the local Little League team your entire life, don't you want to continue to do that? They'll say, of course I do. But, but no one ever frames the question that way. So I think there's a real language problem, among other things, are did. Well, no question. And, Randy, I'm going to have you unpack that more for us in the next segment. But you're listening to the Wealth Building Hour. R.J. Kelly, I have the honor of being your co-host. I'm with Randy Fox, Bill High, two of, of this country's most interesting and extraordinary leaders. Come on back. You're on every word. A podcast or radio show on WS Radio is a great way to create content marketing. Turn prospects into customers, into raving fans. Contact Wade at WSRadio.com or call 866-WS-RADIO. One person has the power to change the world, impact millions of lives, and leave a legacy for lifetimes to come. That person is you. In the New York Times bestseller, What is Your What? Steve Ulcher, award-winning author and founder of the Reinvention Workshop, reveals his proven process that has helped thousands of men and women discover, share, and monetize the one thing they were born to do. Grab your free copy now at www.whatisyourwhat.com slash free. That's www.whatisyourwhat.com forward slash free. Take a break from politics. Tune in and learn something. WS Radio shows are worth your time and are filled with tips and advice. Add us to your lunch routine and we'll give you a meal for your mind. I raised $8,000 to build schools for South African children. After realizing how many people go hungry in San Diego, I now volunteer at a food pantry. I'm spending the next year doing volunteer projects across three countries and helping in ways they designate to be the most helpful. The World Link program at the Joan B. Kroc Institute for Peace and Justice recognizes the potential of youth as agents of social change. Learn how you can help youth become a generation of leaders in action at peace.sandiego.edu. Small businesses are the lifeblood of America's economy. Every Thursday, SBA Radio interviews industry professionals and is dedicated to provide small businesses with timely insights and innovations. Visit www.sbaradio.us for details. Hi, this is Rob Barnett, CEO and founder of VinVillage.com and the Wine and Dine Show on Vin Village Radio. Do you have a wine, event, product, or service to promote? Then contact VinVillage.com to reach thousands of wine lovers across the country. Vin Village connects like-minded wine enthusiasts with unique and exclusive wines, events, products, and services. To learn more, contact us on VinVillage.com. Vin Village is where wine lovers connect. 
Hi, Scale listener. This is David Finkel, co-host with Jeff Hoffman of Scale Your Business Radio. I wanted to let you know that our newest book, Scale, was just released and encourage you to get your copy. The book will give you seven proven principles to grow your business and get your life back. It's for every entrepreneur who ever wondered if they really own their business or if their business owns them. It'll help you to work less by getting your business to produce more. Get your copy online or at your local bookseller. For more information, go to ScaleYourBusinessToolkit.com. Talk to me. Information, news, and entertainment on demand. Accomplishment Coaching is proud to present the following fine programming. Accomplishment Coaching, where coaches lead and leaders coach. AccomplishmentCoaching.com Welcome back to the Wealth Building Hour. Well, hello again, RJ Kelly, Wealth Legacy Group, and we're, we're talking about all things wealth and legacy. That's what Wealth Legacy does. And the other day I was chatting with um, new clients and his wife was objecting. She said, you asked some very intrusive questions. And I thought about that one for a minute. And I said, you know what? You're right. I do ask intrusive questions, but so does your attorney and I would guess your CPA and I would hope your physician among others. And, but I guess what's the, the, the key word here is what's the intent um, there are those people that ask intrusive questions because they are nosy and they just want to you know, spread gossip. Uh, we are highly confidential at Wealth Legacy Group. Nothing. I mean, we just go to extreme uh, measures to keep things confidential. But our goal is we want to know our clients better than anyone has ever come to know them over time. And so I, for this last session of 2017, that's why I wanted to finish with Randy Fox and Bill High, who are two of the most ethical uh, brightest minds and those focused on the use of tools that many times, unfortunately, common CPAs, attorneys, those that are in the mainstream, either are not aware of some of these tools or they just simply feel uh, don't have the confidence to even bring them up because they don't have the background. Now, Randy, you're a third generation entrepreneur, which I love that. Um, one of many things I love about you, you get it. You understand the mind of an entrepreneur uh, and I'll ask you to just unpack a little bit um, the, the the business of your family. It was it's quite interesting to me, but that has given you such a, a background to understand the mind of an entrepreneur, being one yourself. And you're also the editor of of the Plan Giving Design Center, which is a wonderful resource for advisors who are wanting to learn more about how they can grow or at least add some other arrows in their quiver. But um, before we get into some, some case examples, to tell, tell us a little bit about just very quickly about your family and, and you know the, the background of your 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 family because it is to me so interesting. Well, my I, I tell everybody you know it's everybody in my entire family is an entrepreneur. Uh, none of us have really ever held a job. Um, <laughs> I, I, I did I did for three years and I hated every day um, mm. working for somebody else was just not to my liking. Uh, uh, that's not right or wrong. It's just I think the way we were wired. Uh, my gr- my grandfather, my dad's dad, and and by the way, both of my grandfathers were entrepreneurs. My mom's dad uh, actually came over and uh, owned a little gas station and a grocery store and did those kinds of things. But but, but my dad's dad came over from Russia um, right before the turn of the century. Um, he was trained uh, in Russia as a pharmacy apprentice. Um, ended up put him, putting himself through uh, Creighton College, which was in Omaha, Nebraska, and mm-hmm. a Jesuit university, and he was a Russian Jewish man. So mm-hmm. just imagine in the mm-hmm. late 1800s, early 1900s, uh, the, the struggle to learn the language and put himself through, and exactly. then went to work for went to work for cousins and, and developed a cough drop formula in their pharmacy. And... Um, that one thing led to another. People would come from all over Omaha and uh, buy their cough drops. Um, and, and so he thought, you know, we're on to something here. We have a business. And so when he was 50 years old, moved to Chicago because Chicago was a better situated for railroads and manufacturing and supplies than Omaha was. So um, I, I just can't imagine the, the courage that it took uh, 
not only to Absolutely. emigrate from Russia, but then, but, but then to move your family at age 50 across the country into a kind of a great unknown. Uh, so he's always been a hero for me. My dad and uh, his brother took over the company when uh, my grandfather retired, and uh, the business is now gone. It's not made it to the third generation. And, and in fact, my father always kind of discouraged me from going into that business um, for a number of reasons, which are, you know, we don't have enough time to show mm. for. <laughs> you know, Randy, um, but, you're, but you're, it's, you're breaking up a little bit on this side. I'm, I'm going to take a quick second. Would you try calling back in on your cell phone and see if we can make that a little bit better? And in, in the meantime, I'm going to give folks your contact information. But if you try calling back in on the cell phone and see if that, that might clean it up a little bit. But for Randy, Randy has, uh, he's the founder also of Life Legacy Case Design, which is, uh, that's an extraordinary resource for attorneys, particularly and high-end financial advisors that are dealing with families of wealth and significance, because Randy can come along and be that smart guy at the table in a way that is so unobtrusive, uh, but and, and, and yet gets the job done. And on top of that, he also formed a company called EZ Charitable LLC, which just like the name implies, EZ Charitable it's an online training resource for professional advisors that want to expand their capabilities in the philanthropic giving world. And you could reach Randy at Randy at lifelegacydesign.com. That's Randy at lifelegacydesign.com. And website is the same one. And phone number 704-698-4055, 704-698-4055. And we've got Randy back on the phone. So let's see if this does a little bit better. Yeah, no, I, under, I understand oh, it's a little bit better. So, oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Thank ha- you. Happens happens now and then, technology being what it is. Yeah, having a VoIP line ourselves, I do understand it gets a little bubbly. But, okay, so back with us, and your fo- your father really encouraged you, don't come into our business. This is <laughs> it's been good for the family, but <laughs> yeah, not so good. He, he, uh, it, it, and, and, again, he was very close, and we were very close with my, you know, the, the family businesses are just an extension of the family. So, you know, we were with family all the time, and it really instilled a great sense of family in uh, in in myself. You know, I I value family is the is the best thing, the highest thing. So a lot a lot of good came out of it. The the business is no longer there, and that's okay. You know, time times uh, go on. No, and as you know, my father died when I was 18, and I watched the wheels come off the truck within 10 years, and that, that multi-million dollar company was in bankruptcy. And again, not through necessarily a major fault of their own, but just things that didn't get done. And that's as much of what you and I do is not just about philanthropic planning, but it's also about the succession and the transition. And Bill's going to expand that as well and with some of the, the cool things that they're doing in terms of generational planning for, for families and particularly in the book, giving it all away and getting it back again with uh, David Green. So, Randy, you've got just a plethora of of stories. I know just with InnoVision, which is yet another one of your entrepreneurial um, organizations that you founded and that I was a part of for a time and really enjoyed it. You've got hundreds of cases you've been involved with. But what are some a couple of quick examples of folks that were stuck or that that uh, you got brought into and you were able to to really help them? achieve some extraordinary outcomes uh it's hard to it's hard to uh unfortunately or fortunately maybe it's it's hard to narrow down uh, but you know we usually get in get brought into a case because most advisors in the country are not used to working with families of 25 or 50 or 100 million dollars of wealth mm-hmm. i've always uh used the analogy it, it's a little bit like the dog chasing the fire truck everybody says you know, I want to go catch that thing over there, but once they've caught up to it and they sink their <laughs> teeth into the tire, uh, they they really don't know what to do. And so we got called in to be uh, the experts behind the scenes and uh, literally were able to help you know, several hundred families uh, rearrange their wealth in such a way that it benefited their family, but also benefited charity more than it benefited the government. Um, I think most people, again, were just oblivious to the fact that they had a choice, that it didn't have to go to taxes, that some of their wealth could be uh, passed on uh, with their heirs managing it for the benefit of the family's interest, uh, whether it be inside the family or outside the family. So uh, it it was a a wonderful position to be in, and, and it's what I am doing again. 
Well, it, it still never ceases to surprise to amaze me uh, how surprised uh, folks are when they find out there's actually a legislation that goes back to 1969, <laughs> the, the 1969 Tax Reform Act, that addressed and created for the first time what we now know as split interest gifts, where for the first time it was possible to do good things for yourself and your family. At the same time, you could, as long as you're willing to do at the same time good things for others, whether it's a church or school or community, and whether that's now, in the future, or both. And so many of these tools that we're using today have been in the tax code since 1969, and yet other advisors and clients will look at us like, well, how long has this stuff been going on? Well, coming up on 50 years. So, Randy, we've got a case, you and I, several of them, but one it happens to be a very high net worth gentleman here in town who has a ton of real estate, but who wants to get involved in some equities. And you shared with him a couple of ideas that he absolutely had never heard of. Now, he himself is an attorney by training, um, but can you give us a quick uh, facts, obviously, anonymously, but what was his situation, what was he facing, and what were some well, possibilities? Uh, uh, well, this is, a, this is a gentleman worth... I think it was around fifty million dollars mm-hmm. um, with a with a second wife, um, a couple of kids uh, who he was, you know, vaguely connected to, but he didn't really care if they got any more than they were going to get, uh, and was was planning on leaving a significant amount of money, uh, number one, to his uh, new wife, but also uh, to uh, several causes that he believed in. And uh, the problem was he had all this real estate all over the country, uh, most of which was he had been 1031 exchanging for years and doing all sorts of the kinds of things that real estate guys do. And so much of it was greatly appreciated and had low, low, low basis. Um, and well, We're almost things, out of time here. <laughs> I, so one of the things I described to him, I'm sorry, RJ, one of the things I described to him and I've been keen on for the last few years is the young pooled income fund concept. Mm-hmm. And I've been uh, utilizing that a lot because of the size of the deduction and the amount of uh, capability it brings into the donor's hands. And that's a tool that we don't have the time to get into, but it is extraordinary. And But you're listening to the Wealth Building Hour. RJ Kelly here. Come on back for Bill Nowadays, internet devices are an integral part of your home. Everyone in your family has a smartphone, tablet, or a computer. Life is easier knowing that all your devices are secured and your family can surf the internet carefree. ESET Multi-Device Security Pack does just that. One license for all your devices. With ESET, it's simple to stay protected and save money. Enjoy safer technology with ESET Multi-Device Security Pack at ESET.com. That's E-S-E-T dot com. Take a break from politics. Tune in and learn something. WS Radio shows are worth your time and are filled with tips and advice. Add us to your lunch routine and we'll give you a meal for your mind. Tired of presentations with no impact, no inspiration, and no traction? Do dull speakers have you and your team disengaged and distracted by smartphones? Christopher McAuliffe brings energy, insights, and two decades of experience delivered with punch, humor, and heart. Your team will leave energized, uplifted, and with a sense of purpose. Visit ChristopherMcAuliffe.com to bring some heat to your next speaking engagement. M-C-A-U-L-I-F-F-E. ChristopherMcAuliffe.com. This is Bill Gruber with BizVid Communications, a Southern California video production leader. We've been honored to sponsor, produce, write, and host many of the fine programs on WS Radio over the years. So we understand how important the Internet and your website exposure are. As video producers, we know the tricks and secrets to incorporate video to increase your search engine optimization and business success. Visit BizVidCommunications.com to see what we can do for you. B-I-Z-V-I-D Communications.com. Do you want to be a professional coach? Are you in business trying to make a real difference with people you manage or work with? Have you started a coaching practice that isn't quite getting off the ground? Get the skills you need to be a successful coach today with the Coach's Training Program from Accomplishment Coaching. The Coach's Training Program will show you how to help others focus and be more fulfilled. Whether you want to improve your company's bottom line or create a thriving coaching practice, 
Accomplishment Coaching can give you the distinctions and practices you need to coach others effectively today. Accomplishment Coaching has spent six years developing a cutting-edge coaches training program that will have you ready to coach people professionally in just 12 months, and you don't have to take time off work to do it. To find out more about the coaches training program, just call 1-888-548-6813. That's 1-888-548-6813. Hi, this is Rob Barnett, VinVillage.com, where wine lovers connect. Be sure to tune in weekly to VinVillage Radio for exclusive, in-depth interviews with the who's who in wine and food. 